first thing we're going to talk about is what's in the atmosphere. So the atmosphere, let's define that, is the space between Earth and space. So the air, the air we breathe, primarily the air that is right around us. Now the atmosphere is made up of primarily three things. There's other things in there. Um, argon I'm not putting in there, but argon is a half a percent of the atmosphere. But nitrogen is 78% of the atmosphere, and oxygen is about 21% of the atmosphere. Now, do we, which one do we need to live? Do we need nitrogen? We don't. Nitrogen is, um, it is, a, is an inert gas. It doesn't react to anything. Now, let's think about this. Now, if we had the reverse, where there was 78% oxygen, because we need that, why, why not have more? The reason we don't want more is because oxygen oxidizes oxygen is 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 what happens when things burn things rust anything that oxidizes people have heard that word oxidize what that means is that you're you're having a reaction with oxygen oxygen uh, fuels don't burn without oxygen so therefore if we have a forest fire or a brush fire it won't stop burning if we have more oxygen case in point if, if the people are old enough to remember the Mercury program, I think it was the Mercury, it might have been the Apollo program with the, uh, with the astronauts, okay, and we got a little guy on top of a spaceship, and um, they weren't that little, but they compared to the spaceship. But the, the point is that they used to fill the capsules with 100% oxygen. Now, there was a time when... Um, when they went and um, they went up on top of the, you know, they, they put the, locked the, the astronauts into the capsule and they, um, there was a spark. And what happened is that they, um, there was a, everything burned up so fast they couldn't open up the door fast enough to be able to get the astronauts out. So that's how fast things react with their with their in an, in an 100% oxygen environment. Okay, so we just talked about what's in the atmosphere. So we now know what's in the atmosphere, so we're going to ignore that. Now we're going to talk about the phases in those forms. Now, we're going to particularly talk about how the cold factor. So nitrogen is 321 degrees as a liquid. It's obviously gas in our air that we breathe, but in order to get it to be a liquid, it needs to be 321 degrees below zero Fahrenheit or 195 Celsius. Oxygen is very similar. It's very, it's, it's a very similar temperature, 297, but you notice that there's a difference. So everything boils and goes into a liquid or a solid at a different state or different temperature. So it's one thing that's really interesting to think about chemistry and about the physical properties of things is that we can use those distinctions in order, in order to separate them. So and that's actually how they do it in industrial methods is what they do is they take the air and they get it really, really cold, but, they're, but it, they get it below 321. So when they get it really, really cold, then, then they use those different levels of temperature in order to draw off each one of those very precisely. So what we've got in here is liquid nitrogen. Now liquid nitrogen, again, is very, very cold. Therefore, this liquid is very, very cold. Now you see how it makes a, a cloud, but the cloud is not the nitrogen. The cloud is the water vapor that's in the air. So we've got more water vapor in some areas than others in Florida, California, Midwest have a lot more water vapor, so we end up with a lot more cloud. So we can see that we also breathe out water vapor. So there's a lot of water vapor in our breath, and so you can see it if I make it cold, just like when it's in the wintertime and you see your breath. So that just shows you how much water vapor is in your breath. Okay, so I'm going to put that in a different bowl just so it's insulated from the other. But I want you also to notice something else. There's some dripping off the bottom of the bowl. Okay, and we're going to put it into that bowl so we can see it. And if I were to drip it on somebody's head like myself, it stings a little bit. So it doesn't make my head wet, 
So what can we tell from that? Okay, that it's not water. Therefore, if it's also stinging, it's colder than, um, than water. So you start see it start to collect. So it's something coming out of the atmosphere. And we've already talked about what's in the atmosphere, so it has to be something in the atmosphere. The nitrogen is colder. Remember how I said that we can separate things by specific temperature ranges? So therefore, the nitrogen is probably not going to get itself cold enough to turn into a liquid. But the nitrogen is able to get something else cold enough on this table to become a liquid. So what do you think it is? Peter, what do you think? I don't know. What's a little bit warmer than nitrogen? Oxygen. Oxygen. So there we go. We know that that's oxygen. There's some other tests we can do to determine whether that's oxygen or not. Like for instance, ox oxygen is slightly polar. So I could take a magnet and if I dripped it on the counter, I could draw it across, this, across that. What are the one of the other things that you can do to test to see whether it's oxygen? What did we talk about earlier that happens when you have more oxygen content? Things burn faster. So if I had a candle, we're not going to do flames here, so, but if I had a candle and if I drip that oxygen into the, into the flame, the flame should get bigger. So now we're going to talk about the Leyden Frost Effect. We've talked about how it's cold and it's really, really cold. So we've also seen how we can, we can we're reframing here. Um, reframing, just kidding, it's a joke. We can cut that if you want. But we're, now we're going to talk about the Leyden Frost Effect. So the Leyden Frost Effect is, we've seen how the oxygen, which is 321 degrees below zero, causes, uh, or, or is, can drip off the bottom and, it, and it's caused a little bit of discomfort on your head. I oftentimes go on top of kids' heads and I say, now is that water? That's not going to hurt them. Now the reason being is because of the Leyden Frost Effect. We're going to discuss this in depth to a degree. And the reason for this, because we want to have you guys understand what the Leyden Frost Effect is. Leyden Frost Effect was discovered by a doctor about a hundred years ago, a little bit more than a hundred years ago. And what he determined, determined was that if there's a disproportionate or a large degree of temperature between a liquid and a solid that it would tend to boil and if it did that it created a gas barrier between the two objects so so we can see from this um, this slide that the Leyden frost effect there's a slight barrier uh, between if I put it on my hand and the uh, or or for instance, how you see how it it kind of glides around on the bowl, and the reason for that is because it's literally boiling on top of the bowl. So think of like a hot pan you've got in a kitchen, and you forget that it's on the stove, and then you throw cold water on it, and it sizzles, and you can see it kind of look like mercury. Well, that's the Leyden frost effect. And the same effect enables you to take um, your hand and if you dip it in water so it's wet so now you got a liquid on your hand you can stick it in molten lead now molten lead is hot enough that it'll vaporize the water around your hand not burn your hand unless you leave it in there to where there's no more water once the water's gone it'll start to vaporize so therefore I can stick it in my hand and it's not going to cause any any problem unless I leave it in there long enough so if I leave my hand in there for about five seconds it's going to start to sting a little bit okay but it's not going to really cause any damage now people say does this cause frostbite yes if you leave it in there long enough it will cause frostbite I'm going to show you a demonstration of what I consider frostbite it's very minor but people say well does it cause frostbite Okay, I'm going to put a little bit on my hand and I'm going to roll it around. I can keep it rolling around, but you see how they, I created a white spot? That white spot is frostbite. So it's not going to cause a blister. Now, if, it, if I left it on there long enough, it, it could cause a blister. 
it's gone now. Now it's probably going to itch a little bit, you know, over the next day or so, but it's not, it's not an issue. So anyway, that gives you an example of the latent frost effect and why you can stick your hand in it. Now this is how I typically tell people to do it, is to just literally stick their hand in, out, hand out. So that's a safe activity, um, but very interesting. So as we start collecting more and more of the oxygen, we're going to see that it has a little bit of a color to it. And the color oxygen is slightly blue. That's one of the indicators that we can see of oxygen. For about a buck, you can buy these really cool safety glasses that are blue. So anyway, and I really like blue, so it's not the, my favorite color. So anyway, but anyway, that's the another point. So now we're going to talk about safety. So we probably ought to, it's not a bad idea. And I think it looks kind of geeky, and it's we need to geek it up a little bit more. So at any rate, liquid nitrogen, hazards. We've shown that... At low pressure, it's not very hazardous. If we don't have this nozzle on and it comes out, it comes out with pressure. So when it comes out with pressure and it hits your hand, it's going to cause a blister instantly. The pressure is what makes it dangerous. These are at very low pressure, but this is about the same pressure your doctor will use to burn off a wart. So he puts it on that little gun and it comes out and it comes out like a torch. So he's literally act using it like a torch when he's burning off a blister or he's holding it against your skin. We're not doing that here. This is low pressure, no. Now, having said that, now we're gonna talk about clothing. So let's say it splashes. One of the reasons in the store we don't use long sleeves is because people will tend to wear tighter clothing. And if they have tighter clothing, it will hold it against their skin. That's a hazard. So we don't use, um, we don't use long sleeves for that purpose. Now, if somebody has loose clothing, by the time it gets through the clothing, it's going to be vaporized. Now, if I had tight clothing, that would actually cause a, a welt. This is important to understand that when you're using nitrogen, use loose clothing, and that anybody around you is using his, has loose clothing. So for, for instance, if they have a fleece sweater that's not tight, that's going to be a, 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 that's going to be safe. So anyway, we can see that we can just pour it on and it's not going to cause any discomfort. It's a little bit cool, but that's about it. So anyway, that's, that's what I want to talk about as far as safety. Now there's one other thing. Do we have a hat here? like a ball cap, we may not. Okay, there's been, in the past, in Sub-Zero, we've done exp or, uh, kind of a, a nice little science gag where people have put, frozen a hat and they put it on. Now, I want to make this very clear. There's a there's one way to do it and one way only. One, we had a problem where somebody took the hat and they, when they were doing it for people, they, they put the hat like this. Okay, when they soak the hat. The problem with that is now you put it on the head and the lowest part is what gets soaked with the nitrogen, which then again is putting against an ear or something that's, that could be cause some discomfort. Okay, if you put the hat like this, it's not going to soak the band. It's only going to soak the top, which is going to be held up away from the skin or away from the hair. Okay, which is going to, so that's another thing that we need to make sure is covered with safety. It's a nice little fun little gag and it, it does make this little fog and especially in the summer when you've got a lot of sweat, you end up with a lot more fog coming off. 